You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Johnson. After Buzz TV. After Buzz TV. The AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California. Presented by Maria Menounos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's Helix After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Helix After Show. Hey there, Helix fans. Oh, let's just boogie for a quick second. It's the Helix After Show here on AfterBuzz TV. We're talking about Season 1, Episode 7. I'm Matt Lieberman. So excited to have you here. We have a great guest today, great show today. Um, Kira Zagorski is joining us Yay! today. Yay! Who plays Julia, All right, uh, Julia Walker on the show. Uh, Liz Rishmau is here. Hey, guys. Zach Wilson is here. Hey, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Steven Lemieux is here. I'm the couch potato today. Yeah, he's not engineering. He's, I'm he's not in the booth. On the couch. Marissa Serafini and Aaron engineering for us. Thank you. What's up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, another awesome episode. I had so much fun watching this one. We got a lot of interesting clues, a lot of new questions, uh, a lot of questions answered, potentially. You know, the world has been opened up. We've got this great new character in the form of, uh, of Sutton. And uh, we even may be having some feelings for Hatake and maybe even feeling a little bit of sympathy for him. I don't know. How do you guys feel? What's going on? I... I love Hitake. I knew from the beginning that even if he was like a bad guy, I said that he wasn't like, I think whatever he's doing, he feels he's justified in doing it. And seeing the relationship from when we first thought like, wow, he's creepy. Why is he like stalking her to like seeing this like, you know, like again, you can't give it away, but I almost feel like he has some sort of like father daughter connection to Julia. And it's just, it's so warm and endearing, you know, like that whole moment that you shared in the end with the blindfold. Anyway. Um, uh, I was just excited. There's so many. We get answers, but I'm, what's making me love the show is that those answers are raising just a ton more questions. Yeah, it reminds mm -hmm. me of when I watched Lost. Like exactly. every week, I'm like, I have to tune in. I have to tune in. And now we're getting to that point mm -hmm. of the show. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good. Yeah. What do you think, Stephen? <laughs> I really liked it. It gave us a little bit more to work with with our theories and like speculations for what is actually going on. Um, I had a few things come to me when and to go off what you were talking about, Hataki, is. It takes such a good actor to be able to play evil, like mm. play like the bad guy and get sympathy because yeah. you can't play a bad guy and feel like your character's bad. It just doesn't work. Right. You every to... every villain is the hero of their own story. Exactly. Yeah. So he does such a good job with that. It really makes you feel for – it really makes you care about Julia a lot more because if we didn't have Hitaki caring about Julia, we really wouldn't have as much sympathy for her because Alan is with Sarah. So he'd be like, oh, okay, well, they're there. They're there. So she's just kind of under there. But – the only person who's really bringing her to mind and really bringing her character to be something to really care about is Hataki in that sense. Well, I wouldn't necessarily say that that's true. I mean, yeah, uh, Alan and Sarah slept together, but he's been trying to get her out from level R for days. Yeah. And, you know, he's obviously still cares about her. He's still conflicted about everything that went down between uh, she, him, and Peter. He isn't exactly taking very much action to do it, though. <laughs> I, 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 I feel like I feel like Sarah is a distraction, and he totally has <laughs> still feelings for Julia. So. I don't know. What 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 do you think, <laughs> Kira? I know you're you're a bit you're a bit involved in this situation. A little bit involved in this yeah. situation. Um, well, I mean, something that I was always thinking when we started the show was, I'm the bad guy because it's very Legends of the Fall. You know, mm -hmm. sleeping with the brother isn't usually the the route. To yeah. go, <laughs> it's not a nice thing to do. Stay away from friends and brothers. It's just, just don't do that. Probably so especially I, brothers. Yeah, brothers especially. In particular. You know, yeah. and so I felt like that's how we start off the show, and that that kind of it's gonna make it's gonna make it difficult for people to empathize with Julia for sure. I could I could see that happening, but um, but yeah, I think Hero is an exceptional actor and an exceptional person all around. He's he's a true artist. He's probably one of the hardest working actors I've ever met. Really? Oh yeah. What can you tell us a little bit about his process? Um, well, something that I think is well specifically in this episode. Yeah. Um, something that he did, I thought was really cool was, um, you know, you're not you're shooting out of continuity. Sure. And there's that scene when I come upstairs blindfolded, and honestly, the scene is pretty simple for me. I'm just walking in and I I can't see anything and <laughs> and the stuff that's happening to him. But for me, I'm just sort of 
listening to it all and then they walk me up those horrible steps that I have to try to navigate. <laughs> but um, he did this thing where we were we were back behind that secret passage he has and he started, uh, he's holding on to me and he starts going over the old dialogue that we had from the last scene that I did with him days before. Oh, wow. And he just started redoing the scene and, and getting me back to where I need to be oh, wow. with him. And it was just something that I thought, okay, you, he's just an artist. And he's always that connected, always that there for you. It's like he's just one of those people that you work with and you literally feel like you can do anything. Yeah. You're so supported. And I had, um, even up until now, I've had a lot of really interesting scenes with him where I just felt like I can just go for it with this guy. He's just, he's just here to, to tell the story and to the fullest. Yeah, you know? the so the cool. beauty of, of his performance, is, especially this week, is that it did get so raw. You know, mm. his uh, Hatake is a man of a man of walls. He he's very tightly not tightly wound, but he's he's coiled up. You know, you don't really yeah. see any of the inside. There's nothing loose, nothing rattling around, and all of a sudden, finally, we see those walls kind of come down, right. and he's vulnerable. Yeah, it was, that was a beautiful scene, and something that was interesting between episode six and seven. There was a number of times when I was working with him where we would we would do the scene a couple different versions mm -hmm. and to like really raw and dark and just going for it. And then sometimes there was a middle ground and then there was, you know, a little bit more subtle, whatever it was, but we, we always did that. That was the thing that would happen between the two of us. And so it's kind of fun watching the episodes back and seeing, oh, they chose that to tell the story. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's just... It, did they wind up picking a blend of what you what you two were doing together? Because you've been uh, doing a lot of work together in the last few episodes. Yeah, sometimes they did. Uh, like in episode six, the one where um, I, uh, I kind of start yelling at him a yeah. bit. Mm. I know that there was a take where I just really let him have it. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, oh, they kind of pulled back, which I was kind of surprised because it's just, you know, she was, she's dying. But then I thought maybe it was just too much, you know. But we were we really went pretty raw with it. It was it was interesting. So um, when you go raw at something, is it like you're just kind of at one point you're just ad-libbing a little bit more than just what the script said? or No, it's just a lot more. It's, it's this moment where uh, you feel... It's kind of, I always think about this because I've got a theater background, but there's a moment when you're in a scene with somebody and you feel everyone just suck into you, suck into the story, mm -hmm. where everybody yeah. just, they're feeling it with you, mm -hmm. you know? And we'd be, in, we'd be rehearsing something, just going through the steps of something, and you felt the entire crew just go, just silent and get connected and just focused. And you would feel like, whoa, okay, Absorbed it, into we're the all moment. here together, like in it. And yeah. that happens quite often when you're working with him. Yeah, it's I when you know you've awesome. got something. Yeah, yeah, that, that you're finding something together that's that's good, so. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, what, really sh what I really liked about that scene is it showed that he, as much as he knows everything, we like we, we feel like he's the character who knows everything, mm -hmm. but at the same time, I believe that he didn't plan on you to be infected when you arrived at the place. He wanted you at the base, but he didn't plan on you ever being infected with the Narvik virus. Mm. And then the fact that he had to give you what we believe was Sojo, we believe is something we don't really know what he gave you yet to turn you into I what... have a theory about what it yeah. was. Well, mm. Okay. What? <laughs> the fact that he gave you that, he wasn't sure of its success rate. He wasn't sure what it was going to do to you because when, when he breaks down, he's like, yeah. okay... My my the fact that it worked, he's like, it it feels like you see just his shoulders, like all the weights just lifted off his shoulders. Yeah. The fact that he knows that you're not going to be suffering from this virus anymore. But what's interesting about that in itself is that when I see um when I see what this virus is, and I see that how it behaves when you put it in in the cult when you culture it, and it just explodes like with with life. And then we learn that Hataki was telling them that this, oh, we're just trying to develop a cure for cancer. And it's like cancer is, is a unchecked growth of cells. And that's what this is when you put it in, in a culture, is it's, it's unchecked growth. So I feel like what he did to Julia saved her, but at the same time, it's something that they are trying to find a cure for as well. Yeah. yeah. Well, here's here's the beauty of what's happening because he's relieved that your your Narvik symptoms are gone, but then when he discovers that your eyes have turned this this uh, ghostly silver, silver uh, the same that he has, the same that Sutton has, uh, it causes him to to weep and he has to keep it together. So obviously, whatever he whatever he gave 
uh, whatever he gave Julia, he was hoping would would curb that transformation, which gets me to my theory, and I'm really really <laughs> proud of it. Well, we keep now we're seeing more of the effects yeah. of <clears throat> other than. <clears throat> Just silver eyes. Right. Now there's something where teeth need to be grinded down. Oh my God, yeah. what's that all about? Right? So excited about that. <laughs> I'm not ready to jump to the conclusion that there's aliens involved. I'm not ready. Yeah. But, so, Narvik A is the is the virus that uh, Alaria contracted him to make. It's the one they agreed upon. It's the one they had tested out for some sort of nefarious plan to uh, release it into the world and thin the herd, you know, end sort of the overpopulation of the planet mm -hmm. in a way that they choose and then disperse the cure and no one's ever the wiser where it came from. You know, now we've just, we have this new world order that they can better control. In my opinion, Narvik B, which they did not contract him to make and was totally his idea, <laughs> is either He's uh, the cure for Narvik A that he says that he hasn't made, or what I really think it is, it is uh, a cure. Uh, the Narvik A, or sorry, Narvik B turns these people into whatever they are. It turns it turns uh, human beings into these silver-eyed creatures, whatever they are, instead of dying. And he was going to do that instead. Like their true form, like our evolved form, right? Or something? Like the 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 artificial DNA that Narvik B is trying to graft onto our own human DNA is whatever whatever changes these people into these silver-eyed whatever they are. So uh, basically, instead of instead of when they release Narvik A into the world, right? He would release Narvik B, and instead of thinning the population, it would just create one master race, right. as opposed to it would save them instead of instead of them being this sort of slave race to whatever these silver-eyed things are. Yes, instead of, instead of having like let's say we have everyone's a human, yeah, and then we have five let's just call them gods. We have five gods, and the rest are humans. Yeah, if the gods were were to thin out all the humans, instead it would turn everyone into gods. Then it's basically the same as having everyone as humans again. Right. It's exactly the same. It's his way of saving the planet. I'm saying that he's altruistically <laughs> trying to save the planet. Deep. But here's but here's but here's the deal with that, man. Okay. The reason why he said it was progress when Peter was this effing vector and you know is kind of like <laughs> throw, throwing up ziz and all this stuff <laughs> is because he didn't die he was starting to transform these vectors are just the first it, it, it was a mistake in the formula whatever it is it's not ready to completely turn them into silver eyes whatever's special about julia or whatever he gave her whatever's going on that's the end product and the vector form whatever that is is just the transition stage I also it's why they they recognize the silver eyes and they don't Attack them. I also have one more thing to add that we find out a little bit about in this, and okay. that is... Um, and then I want Kira to say whether or not I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> Never know. I don't think she can give that away. Otherwise, we won't even get to air this podcast, and then we'll have to take it off. Um, <laughs> the fact that... the, f I mean, just, just from this, we learn that a normal human being can become what they are. Right. So, like, this, that in itself is really important information because before it was like okay was Hataki born this way was he this right. from the start is uh is Sutton this way from the start no it means that these people were human beings and now they are something else it, let me finish it also says that it doesn't it cures you to a certain extent okay because Hataki still had all those scars on him from the burns and things like that so it also seems that this is almost kind of like a last resort in that he used it as a last resort to save Julia from turning into an incomplete vector, and somebody used it on him as a last resort to save him from kill being killed from the burn scars. Interesting. So dun, dun, dun. Well, actually, that kind of explains the whole teeth thing, because... And that's why I think it's Sodra. Because the only time when you do something with only a 20% chance of success is when it's, there's no other option. And for Julia, there was no other option. For Hitaki, with those burns and everything, there was probably no other option. Okay. But Sojourn, they make it clear, or at least from the one doctor's perspective, that it has never been used on a human before. They could have withheld it from him. Yeah, well, but, but I mean, just the way Hitaki and um, what's this uh, woman's, uh, uh, Constance, Constance were, you uh, know, she was saying something about how, you know, you knew that all these people were expendable when you went into this. So obviously, if he went into this thinking that these people were going to get killed in the end because they don't have any witnesses, why would he tell the guy 
that you know he's he's irrelevant. So but why that would guy he... was the one developing Sodra. Yeah, yeah, but at the same time, I mean, if he's well, then again, yeah, that doesn't make sense because he was going to die. I feel like we jumped off the deep end really, really <laughs> quickly in a big way, and I want to make sure Kira's with us. <laughs> no, more importantly, Matt yeah. wants to make sure that Kira is going to tell him that he's right no, because I, Matt likes well, to I have, be right. Well, I have two things. Okay, sweet. About that, one, I, I wish I. I'll, I can't wait to talk to you about my theory about what he gave me. Okay, yes. But I can't do it today, so uh, we'll have to, I'll have to just okay. We'll throw in a little phone call together. All right, we'll yes. throw a few we'll episodes later. Together, um, but I'm curious if you thought that I had Narvik A or Narvik B. Uh. Um. Well, you if you were you think, like Matt? infected in the beginning with Narvik A or infected. Well, in the I was infected. She was infected. She got. Okay. She got. We saw that part from right? Peter all over her in the shower. Right. right. Well. That's another thing is we don't exactly know, like, because Peter was infected by both of them. Right. He had both. He, he had, had both. both strains. But we, but that doesn't mean it didn't develop inside of him into something new and he infected people with something new. Is he the only person who had both strains? As far as we know, yes. Yeah, because he was the only one of the three people who didn't die. So okay. people are turning into what Peter's turning into. So I don't think... But they're not turning into what Peter's turning into because Peter only passed <laughs> on the virus to one person, and that is Julia, who has had a drastically different reaction no. than anybody else. Oh, is that true? No. Is that not true? No. Uh, remember that one episode where everybody's doing their little confessions to Dr. Jordan there, and they're, and they're talking about, oh, Peter attacked me, and I feel so violated. That's then, right. Yeah, he, okay. he, he went to Fine. everyone. Fine, forget it. So, like, what he, yeah. he infected he everyone. He was kind of around that whole Yeah, he infected yeah. everyone with a form of <laughs> By both. the way, one of my favorite lines when we were shooting, and I couldn't, I couldn't get through it. I think they edited around it a little bit, but just I'm sitting there doing some scientific business over here. And then Jordan comes in and she's talking about, ah, they say that Peter was, was um, doing some kind of oral contact. And my character... What do you mean, like a kiss or yeah. <laughs> a bite or what? Who Super is she? Casual. Yeah. Who is she? What was going on? I'm not her. jealous. I'm fine. Yeah. What? It's over. It was just so funny. Yeah. What, like a kiss yeah. or a bite? Yeah. Going back Alan, to that know, shower so funny. scene. Like, I just have to ask though. That whole scene. Like, I mean, I feel like I, I feel like there's so many scenes that must be so fun. Like, I, I think we before the show we were asking if there were any like really funny scenes uh, with um, Hero. Or and just but just most of the scenes were funny to me. Yeah, <laughs> but in terms of the shower scene, I mean, first of all, like they film you and it's like I'm yeah. sure you have something on, but like it has to appear like you're naked because you're showering. Right. So you probably feel super exposed because all these people are just like an action and just watching you. Yeah. Is everyone saying action? Well, in my head, that's what happens. It's a team. It's, it's a just team a effort. It's a team. Okay, everybody <laughs> one gets action. 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 Yeah. action. But like, you know, like, I mean, how was that scene? Did they have to have a lot of takes? Was it kind of like super goofy, you know? Like well, honestly, I mean, at first when I saw, the, because see, we, we saw the pilot script and then you're in the middle of shooting and then you get the next episode and it's oh oh there's a shower scene <laughs> <laughs> and uh but the thing that was great about it is um one of our executive producers who was one of our directors brad turner he's just a classy guy and so what I, there was a part of me going how are they going to shoot this and i think it, i need to talk to somebody about <laughs> yeah. what this is going to be but um his whole thing about the frosted glass um he said don't worry it's going to be you know it's going to be tasteful. Yes. So I felt like, okay, great. And honestly, I'm wearing, I'm wearing underpants. Like I, they just gave me some nude stuff to wear underneath. Right. And um, Neil is awesome. He's, he's just the such. Best. He is awesome. Yeah. He's a great actor, <laughs> and he's a great person to work with. And he's so professional and down to earth. And um, I knew him from before we started shooting this too. Not like terribly well, but I knew him. I hung out with him a couple of times. And then I would, to be perfectly honest, I felt like really grateful that he was the person I had to do this scene with because I was so comfortable with him. Oh, and yeah. it ended up being fun because it's just, it's a cool, it's a cool scene. It's just interesting, you yeah. know? It's yeah. because there's so much going on between us, the relationship. And then in the end, you're sitting there, oh, we need to get that again. Oh, can you just, you have to hold me in a way I can't get my arms out. And then, oh, wait, we can't bang the heads because, like, the first time I attacked him with my teeth because I was like, ah! And he said, I'm not really attacking you, so <laughs> don't hurt me. You know, but um, so it's just, it's quite technical, yeah. you know, yeah. around all of that. And and then also having this emotional backstory yeah, to deal yeah. with seeing him for the first yeah. time. Um, I, I have to ask, 
ask, what is what is Ziz made out of? It's what, chocolate. It's just pure chocolate sauce. No, not pure chocolate. No. It's chocolate, and uh, Neil will be better at telling you this because he's had a lot more experience oh, with this stuff than me. <laughs> Poor guy. I'm like, oh, i got to get that stuff again. Um, it's chocolate and uh, vanilla and almond, I think. Oh. And then there's dye in it, too, because okay. it's, gotta be know, like black. it's pretty black. To make it extra tasty. We need to make yeah. some, like, Ziz lava cupcakes or something. Liz, oh my God. Ziz lava yes. molten chocolate cakes. Yeah. It's but pretty I just, gross. But real quick, though, because I remember we were debating about this, and I told Zach he was totally wrong, and because I also like to be right. The scene, I know there was tension, like Matt just said, that there was totally a lot of stuff going between these two characters. What are you looking at me? I'm like, waiting. Right? I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Yeah. Like, yeah. You well, said that drop. she wanted him, and I'm like, no, she's no. scared because she's naked in a shower and super creepy infected guy is just like like and she's naked and she's trying yeah. not to like freak him out so he doesn't attack her because she doesn't know right. what's going to happen i don't know what he's going to do right. yeah zach said like no i think in a way julia wanted him and i was like bro well, no, no. she's happy to say i want to mouth cle- attack me yeah. with your black <laughs> weird stuff i want to clear up awesome. right. i want to clear up what i meant yeah, that you know that i saw what the rat did to the other rat yeah. it wasn't pleasant yeah. For Not that she wanted to get zizzed, <laughs> but that like she was oh, happy to see him again and still processing. Like when you see somebody you're familiar with in like this crazy circumstance, you still see that person that you knew. Well, she's she, I, yeah. You're that's the thing that's interesting about um, about the the vectors is that you, the the humanity is still there. Yeah. So you, you, I mean, and definitely the way they shot the scene is that you see him through the monster, mm-hmm. and I'm not sure what he's going to do because I haven't encountered the rest of the vectors yet. I haven't yeah. seen. But he hasn't done this to me yet. Yeah. <laughs> I saw the rat situation, but it's it was still a bit of a mystery. So, but I think that it, yeah, I, I don't think she didn't want that to happen. No, no, <laughs> no. I, I and think I don't what, think it would be pleasant to yeah. make out. I think what I because no, yeah. again, well, he hasn't showered. Right. True. And, <laughs> true. What I think what he was clothes. trying to say. Yeah. What I was originally saying it was a comment to your performance that there was this flutter of familiarity. Yes. That really yeah. sold me on that scene because it wasn't just. Oh, this is a scary bad guy. It was, no, this is a scary bad guy that I know and that's, that I have cared for. That's awesome that you saw that because yeah. I, I mean, it was a tricky balance because that was the, that was the thing that we were playing with is that it, it can't, I can't just be terrified the whole time, but also mm-hmm. I need to fight back because I don't want that to happen. But we also have to play the relationship. Yeah. So, well, yeah. uh, well, what can you tell us? Uh, you know, we've we've seen a little bit uh, of it, but Peter's appearing to her in her hallucinations. How does Julia feel about Peter in this present moment? What can you tell us about sort of their connection? Like why we know that the, the marriage with Alan wasn't, was far from perfect. Mm -hmm. Um, but still what kind of drew you to Peter and what's still there? Um, I think so that's kind of getting into the past the the history stuff with them yeah and they were pretty vague about telling me exactly what the details were with that too and i i don't really find out the true details until i think episode 10 okay about what happened so even while i was shooting i would be kind of making up my own story to go with their story so i could play it (laughs) to be honest could you tell us that at least (laughs) (laughs) what are you doing there um but what was cool about these episodes, I love the hallucination storyline yeah. for for Julia. I thought it was so cool. I mean, just uh, everything about it because it's just really getting into her subconscious and uh, the little girl and the place and the Turkey's Thanksgiving is. scene was just <laughs> amazing. Um, but where, where Peter's concerned now in, in Seven, it's just... I think it's this piece of he's just the person who's always kind of been there, you yeah. know. And I and I got the sense that with uh, with the character with Alan and um, I saw this in episode two. And again, this was something that I figured out in the scene with Billy. But uh, that point when I'm in the the airlock thing by myself and he comes in, and I'm kind of tripped out about the day right before I get attacked in the shower. <laughs> but he comes in and I cover everything. And so I, what something that I realized is that he was never somebody I could talk to. He just was never there for me. So I think Peter was the guy that was just always there for me, you know, yeah. and I could be whatever. I could f- cry. I could freak out. I think as far as the scientist goes, she's a little bit more down to earth. Mm-hmm. She's, she's accomplished. She's already done her awards and stuff, and she likes to really get out there and be in it. And I think that Peter was just... He just, he loved her. He had a, a focus on her that she needed. Yeah, because you know? I, I feel like there's a part where Alan keeps on reiterating how you were like the pro at... Um, RNA sequencing. Yeah, the RNA mm-hmm. sequencing. And I almost feel in a way, not saying that Alan doesn't care about Julia. I mean, he was married to her for after all, but I almost feel like he was in love 
with her mind mm. more than her as a person. Mm. And I feel like Peter saw that more. So what you're saying about the connection, you know, like, you know, Alan loves her, but is more like, oh yeah, this is like my colleague. We can talk about all the science stuff and oh, she's genius. And yeah. and then, you know, Peter just sees Julia, you know? So I yeah. think that's really interesting how, um, whether they did it intentionally or not, that the writers may have created that between the characters. But what I love is that you're asking me about it, that it's not displayed yeah. In the story. I love that she's clearly focused on other things, trying to figure stuff out. So there's hints of relationship stuff, but there's there's other things to do, and I think it, it makes it more interesting. Oh, yeah. So this yeah. is kind of a speculation at this point. Yeah. But if I it's fairly far fetched, so bear with me. <laughs> but if I don't say it and then it happens, I'll be totally kicking myself in the ass. <laughs> the relationship that Peter and Alan and Julia have with each other, it's very much likened to children who grew up together. And that's kind of what led me to believe a little bit more that, okay, we had 32 children kidnapped from this area. And then we have this whole backstory with, with Alan and with Peter and Julia that really feels like they could have been kids together. And Peter could have been somebody who's there for you when you were a child, but you ended up with Alan. And then like later in life, you guys back together. The fact that you don't know really anything about Montana or anything about your childhood memories or anything could also leaves the door wide open for... Peter's past, for Alan's past, everyone's past to be kind of faux in a way. Right. So, so you're you, saying the, the reveal with, with Dan being Meeksa, uh, you're saying that potentially more members of our cast, uh, many fans, uh, us included, as, you know, suspect that you were one of those children. Could Alan and Peter have also been those children? I'm saying almost anyone could have been any of those children. And the fact that the, the, th the crazy thing about this base is the heads on ice. And when oh God, yeah. when Sutton God, says when God. Sutton says you're not going to be uh, Hataki's not going to be the leader here forever, I feel like and again this goes back to my earlier prediction this season in that it's going to have different situations because the base just constantly reinvents itself. It does a flush and then it starts again. It does a flush and it starts again. And with these children, if they were to take children who won't be missed from this town. And when they're adults, they become this part of the thing because they have people in places and you have to breed loyalty to actually... Sorry, can you be a bit more... You're being very vague. I'm being very vague. <laughs> um, let's say, for instance, every 50 years or so, they kidnap about 30 children from nearby villages. And then as they grow up, they lead them to be in these situations in the CDC and think for uh, research. They lead them to be in strategic places, in different fields, and oh. make sure that they have lives of significance that can help them later down the road. Exactly. Yeah, and they're you all... had a theory on her due to getting into RNA sequencing, like she was meant to... Yeah, like these people are all kind of like guided down this path. Yeah. And they're all expendable, so who are they going to bring in for this mission? They're going to bring in the people who are expendable. I mean... I don't know. It's kind of far-fetched. Right. But when we start getting into kids being kidnapped and, like, there's 31 of them and then they have such a rich history together. Right. And I, I, I see where you're coming from, but at the same time, yes, if you're breeding people for specific purposes, then they're not expendable because you need them to be doing that thing, whatever you're trying to get them to do. What, what, but this is one base. But here's... here's so your your theory is based on the thought that Alan and Peter could also be these kids. So what do we know about their past? We know all they talk about is their father who was, you know, a drunken sot who treated them really poorly and it, it caused them to have two very different kinds of personalities. Peter, it made him very loose and, you know, he kind of, I think, takes more enjoyment out of life because he realizes that it's fleeting. Alan has kind of, you know, become this very repressed guy, you know, very save the world. If I can save enough lives, maybe, you know, I can get over what my father did to me. Versus Julia, who has some vague memories of her mother taking her to Montana in this place she doesn't quite recognize. And she never really mentions her father. Right. Mm. Um, so it, it does kind of, it is interesting in that they only seem to have very specific memories about their past that, uh, that lead them and as you said and that have influenced them and led them to these positions that they're in now it's definitely an interesting theory and i'm i'm curious to see how it develops as the season goes on i do need to talk about itunes i'm so sorry i'm so i'm sorry okay <laughs> so rude i'm now. sorry too yeah you Are had you? to segue out of what i was saying yeah. to go into itunes <laughs> i'm gonna sit back in my chair for Good. so much to talk about be sorry Listen, okay, here's the thing, folks. 
we we got way more Helix discussion coming up, uh, way more with Kira. We're so excited that uh, that we have her here, and we have such amazing guests. Uh, we have another amazing guest, Mark Ganame, is coming into the studio on Friday. We're doing taping a very special Helix after show this Friday night. We're going to be watching the show live and recapping episode eight Friday night. So uh, be keep your eyes peeled for that. But here's the thing, folks: we need your support. We do this show because we love Helix. We want to support great television, and Helix is great television. If you haven't told at least three friends about it and gotten them hooked. <laughs> What are you doing? Get Seriously. off the couch. Get off the freeway if you're listening to this in your car. <laughs> Call your friend and be like, listen, there's this show. It takes place in the Arctic. There's Ziz involved. I know what you're thinking. What is that? <laughs> That's a good beginning of the conversation. I'm just helping you out. I'm just helping you out with conversational <laughs> skills. It's one of my many, many duties as, as master and chairman of the Helix podcast. Everyone's going to debate those titles. We're going to ignore that I ever even said them. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we're not. Here's the thing. Uh, Master and chairman. Master and chairman. Uh, here's the thing, folks. Free podcast. You can stream it, watch it, download it on any of your devices. Uh, you know, what could you do for us if you were so inclined? I'll tell you. Go to iTunes. You slap the show with a rating. Give us a review. It really means the world. It's five the, stars. Oh, it's a, it could be a five-star rating if you like great guests it and great It will series. be a five-star rating. Okay. Well, don't put the pressure on If you If you like Kira... Then you should give us five stars. Oh. If you like <laughs> other people from the show, okay. you don't like want her to cry. Like, yeah, <laughs> guys, may, may I finish my 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 plug, please? Uh, just it really does mean the world, and I'll tell you why. Uh, it's a little thing called SEO. Ever heard of it? Search engine optimization. Well, shows with more ratings, uh, better ratings, more reviews are easier to find on iTunes. We want people who discovers this show to be able to discover great podcasts about it, ours being chief among them. We want to be the number one Helix podcast on the web. I think it's not that hard. I think we can do it. Number one show on After Buzz TV. A little harder, but guess what? We get our butts into gear, get the old fannies working, we can make this happen. I love this show. Let's continue. I'm going to leave that to the chairman commander of this podcast, <laughs> apparently. Inspiring. It's uh, master. Well, much the way Hitaki is right now leading the base, I think our engi normal engineer, <laughs> Steven, can come in like seven of nine and uh, depose him. There's a master him. chairman and a normal engineer. Yeah. yeah. Matt. <laughs> Matt. He's normal. I, I, I'm going to start trying to change, change Zach's opinion of you. Like, Zach. You know, Matt's not going to be chairman commander of this uh, podcast very long. Yeah. I feel like it's even like if Matt was like a he frozen head, it still wouldn't shut up, though. <laughs> well, <laughs> just keep going. If you gave me a monkey in my jar oh, and you froze my head with a monkey, then, then just I could shut up. Yeah, exactly. I'd be really excited. I have a question. Please going ask Going back question. to Peter, I remember, I think it was in the pilot, <laughs> that I have to ask because I'm just like, ah! Um, in the pilot, he they were watching a video of Peter talking about it, and he said something about a relationship with somebody named T. <laughs> you might not be able to tell us anything. Are we going to find out? Are we? Are they, are they going to come back to that this season? Uh, <laughs> uh, Damn, and the iTunes when is Neil coming with in? The... <laughs> Neil's uh, probably coming in next week. We got him. That's down. one for Neil, I think. Okay, okay. all yeah. right, it's good. All I just right. yeah, yeah, it's prop myself for remembering that because it's been. Bugging I'm proud me. of you for remembering that. Right, right? it's the one. It's the little details. Well, because they were talking about you know their relationships and everything, and then I thought, well, who the hell is T? Like, if uh, I was is T, right? Julie's all like, <laughs> yeah. excuse me, excuse me, <laughs> a bite or a kiss, or you know what was funny though during the Thanksgiving scene, I remember feeling like, I should choose what everyone's wearing. It's my hallucination. <laughs> and there was, there was something about when I was walking into the scene and, and uh, Neil was coming out of somewhere, I was like, are you wearing that? <laughs> oh yeah, this is, I said, oh. Okay, and he said, you seem disappointed. I said, well, I would have put you in something else. <laughs> I thought, I should, I should right? choose it's your imagination. Yeah. This is my, this is my, this is my thing. Yeah. You were I want to pick what people are wearing. <laughs> I yeah. didn't picture you in those shoes. I didn't. <laughs> I no, didn't, I don't even know what those shoes are. <laughs> I actually wanted to ask uh, about that. You know, you talked about shoes and it was there and then it went away. Um, <laughs> the scene of the Thanksgiving scene and everything like that. Um, so how was it like filming that whole scene and everything? Did you get to choose any any input into the scene? Because oh, yes. I remember now. I did. You were saying how you felt that because Julia was more down to earth, because we were asking if it was weird to see yourself on, on TV, and you said, well, more so if it's a character that's completely different from who I am, but you related more to Julia because she's more down to earth. Mm. So like, 
how how is you know you know what I mean like you connect more and everything so did they yeah. give any input to that in the scene uh well a, a bit uh, honestly it, that was where they had me uh it, what's interesting about it and I'm sure Neil will be able to chime in on this is that after you get into that because I don't go to makeup for a few episodes it's just you know I'm sick I go to the the vis effects like horrible make her look like a monster <laughs> and then you're sitting there and people are in a scene with you and they're just looking at you like you're gonna kill me or so you know what I mean it's just, yeah. and then you're just hanging out and you forget oh yeah I'm I'm covered in this stuff so it's interesting how everyone perceives you and treats you different it's just a shift um, another thing that was interesting is how people were around me on set when I was blindfolded I'm fine I'm not really blind but everybody are you okay are you okay is good? Um, but I loved I loved that Mark was in the uniform I loved that um, and that's just a personal thing for me because my, my dad is a Vietnam vet and he was a Marine back in the oh, day. Awesome. So I see these old photos and then I know he's with the Army, but there was something about that uniform that was so perfect for this strange You would have had in. him in that uniform. That one was perfect. That one was perfect. <laughs> right. I loved that. Right. Um, the main thing, I don't know why, I really wish that I had a fancy dress on because everyone else was dressed up and I thought it would have looked amazing if I was covered in the makeup all over mm -hmm. my yeah. arms and I was wearing this dress yeah. and just feeling and I would have loved that instead of the clothes that I was typically yeah. in. that was the only thing I wished yeah. but it, the, would have, it would have made a rad promotional photo oh yeah, yeah. Oh my God. and but the, the thing that uh, the one thing for some reason I wanted to be the one to pass the the uh, sweet potatoes to hero yeah. That was the thing <laughs> that I needed in the scene. Was I said because they just I, they were gonna have it. It could have been anywhere, and I said no, no, no. Please let me be the one to pass it to him. That I'm just like, what what's going on? Oh sure, yeah. Let me give that to you. Yeah. You know, I yeah. just that was the only moment Put I needed to really the scene. to right. really make it be there. But it was it was funny because they they were great. They, like I remember Billy and uh, Neil just being super over the top and just weird. <laughs> and I'm just having to look at them. It was just it was so great with the two of them, and and then the whole alcoholic thing with the father just walking in and Billy was chugging the glass of, mm -hmm. you know, movie wine. Yeah. And uh, that kind of stuff was, everybody gave me so much to play with. It was cool. No, Great. That's awesome. Well, I, I got to steer the, the conversation back towards this episode because yes. we're not going to be able to do it <laughs> again. Jerry um, Ryan. But, you know, please chime in. <laughs> yeah, so Cameron Sutton uh, of the Alaria Corporation, Corporation, Jerry Ryan coming in. Great to see her back on the small screen. Uh, and, uh, you know, definitely bringing a different energy to uh, Arctic Biosystems. And we, we learn a whole hell of a lot, at least about the genesis of this whole thing. Why are we all here? Well, uh, Arctic Biosystems is in fact a subsidiary of Alaria. That's what you were saying last week, Stephen. So kudos um, on, on getting that. Um, and uh, they have, they wanna, for some reason, create a disease that can wipe out a large segment of the population. What do you think's going on there? Well, it seems like they're up there. It's a, it's, they talk about big pharma. Yeah. Sarah brings it up, like just calling them big pharma. This is sort of a worst case scenario of like what one of these companies could do if they're only looking at the bottom line. Yeah. What could they do to just increase their profits? Well, let's get everybody sick and be the only one with a cure. Mm. Right. But we've also got this weird biological difference between, uh, you know, Sutton, Hatake, and now Julia and everyone else on the planet. How many of these pe people are there and uh, what is their agenda? How long have they been alive? One of the interesting things about your point earlier, Stephen, about um, about reducing cancer growth and instead of having um, this massive generation of cellular tissue, it's the reason why she'd have to file down her teeth. Why Cameron would have to file down her teeth. Because Const or, yes. Sorry, Constance would have to file file down her teeth all the time because they would be constantly growing, fingernails constantly growing, hmm. teeth constantly That's growing. That's why her name is Constance. Because she's, she's constant. the Constance. <laughs> oh my god! Um, like, we do have lost writers on the <laughs> show. I also, that I should also have been the button for the show. I know. <laughs> there, there was a throwaway line you might have missed, but I kind of looked behind it a little bit more, and she says that I had to get on a helicopter for two hours to get here. It was so uncomfortable, and I kind of feel like. The people who have the eyes like that do not like being cold hmm. because they're in an Arctic base. Nobody complains about the cold. And that's the only line I've really heard about somebody complaining about having to be outside. No one complained cold. about the white room when they were out there and he nearly froze to death. Well, no, I think maybe it's because of all the white snow flowing around. Like I have blue eyes, which are like really sensitive to light. I mean, you do too, Stephen, right? So do I, I just I? do no, you I'm, have blue eyes. I'm, 
I don't look into your anyway, eyes. Off enough. topic. Sorry. So anyway, um, I just, I just, <laughs> I just feel no. I just feel like maybe because they're so sensitive to light and everything. I mean, there's a bunch of white snow flying around, and maybe it just and hurts. lots of white hallways and white. Yeah, it just hurts lights. their eyes more, and right. that's why, like, even with the contacts, and because she's wearing blue contacts, so maybe she's not getting as much protection as like Take is when he's wearing brown contacts. It's, I don't know. I don't know. I I, I think I feel like mm, cold right? and well, so, something uh, about the silver eyes is super she painful. Wants to say something, but she kind of wants to. I think I can say this. Yeah, I think I can say this. Well, um, I think part of the the pain that was going on with with Jules anyway was that this was a transformation, and that could be part of the pain of the eyes yeah. and the light. Mm -hmm. But uh, the other guys, I wonder. I'm thinking it's to cover it up because okay. yeah. nobody's gonna, you know. Whatever is happening with the silver eyes, don't want folks going. What's up with you? That's true. Right. That's that's something I think is yeah. They're safe. just basic they, they don't contacts. Want, yeah. Yeah. They, they don't want anybody to know. Yeah. That that's well, going if you're, on. If you're being rewritten from the genetic level, that's got to be incredibly painful. You know, it's it's it, if it's happening to every one of your cells at the same time. True. It's it's got to be like a searing pain, mm -hmm. and at that point, it's changing your eyes. Well, and that was something the way we were shooting episode seven. The um, Mike was directing that one. We, we we had talked about the balance of this piece at the end of six is super painful. Now we have to start okay a couple times, and it flashes. We have to have some pain, and then we have to let it simmer down when you're able to open them. So it's like adapting. Yeah. By yeah. the end of the episode, so it also begs the question. Why does Hitaki still need the need the contact lenses when Sutton does not? Well, like she no, she Sutton did though. Yes, yeah, she had. She them. took them out when she, she looked right. She took them out into... really quickly. Is yeah, that... yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. I thought she was just like rubbed her eyes. I didn't no. see her like take anything out. She took them out really quickly. Took and them again... out like a champ, like someone who's been alive for five hundred <laughs> or more years. Like no reaction, <laughs> no reaction. Well, like here, I, I, like she Tough said, crowd. it might be it's just <laughs> for for you know hiding. Also, there is that scene with the vector. Oh yeah, we got to talk about this. <laughs> I love it. It can might I, make. It, can, can, can we I say the f word? Can or? we can. say the f word? Yeah, you I can. think so. This is an adult show. We'll I say think. it's explicit because this is just too funny. Yeah. Yes, it's okay. too funny. <laughs> <laughs> Matt has no idea because Matt um, was in another podcast, so this is just going to be hilarious. But oh right? well, well, this is just. I, I was just mentioning earlier that um, I got the giggles pretty much once a day on set. It had to happen to me somewhere. It's just something would crack me up, or some person would. Sure. Um, but uh, in this particular day, the, the scene where <laughs> I'm blindfolded and then the vector comes in and we have the whole thing. Right. Um, we're getting her coverage over my shoulder and I'm kind of in there with our, our camera guys who are awesome and, you know, at this point become really close with them. And, and so I'm sitting in there next to Jeff Wah and we're going to get her coverage and she's coming in and the director's trying to give her some direction about what he wants specifically and all the stuff, the way she growls at me or does her little thing. And in the script, the way it was written in the stage direction, it says <laughs> the red <laughs> something to the effect of the red headed vector will come in and she I fox jewels. <laughs> and I remember reading it thinking, Oh, I think that I don't think that means what you think it means. I think that's something else. Princess Bride. Yeah. But yeah, but then I'm sitting there. And we're trying to do the scene, and she just got really. Like, it was great because she's trying to really get in the scene with me and be there for me, and she's just fired up. And in all seriousness, he's saying, "Just kind of start here and then go here." And she goes, "No, no, no! I have to eye fuck her because it sets. I eye fuck her. Yeah, I'm eye fucking her." These and are, she was just adamant yeah. about it. Text-based so choices. Text-based yeah. choices. Yeah. It's adding a whole new level to the vectors. Yeah. They yeah. are sexually active now. Don't say. Don't tell me what you want me to do if you don't want me to do it because you already put it there. It's a yeah. print. You can't take it away. There's no whiteout here. Okay. No. 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 <laughs> She's just too shy to I talk. It. That's why they just have to eye fuck everybody. Yeah. Oh, God. They so want to connect funny. so badly. So funny. Yeah. Um, we got to just rush through some main points. The episode. Yeah, so, we got to so talk. Just, I want to just rush like three main points that please, we don't please, really have please, to talk please. about. I just want to shout them out because the fans are going to make. Why don't you talk about this? Yeah. Um, Anana and Sergio. We get yeah. a little bit of love Yay. between them. I know. Well, she also says I don't like you, but I sp uh -huh. I felt some sparks before we find out that he's banging uh, Constance Sutton. Yeah. Okay. Which terrible. Definitely. And then uh, we get the Sarahs <laughs> when uh, <laughs> she is the most important person <laughs> on that this window, team. That window, that damn window where everybody's just looking the at creepy everybody. Creepy window. The, 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 the awkward window. Yeah. The awkward window that's what you call it it's pretty much the, and then it's like oh i better mute the mic inconspicuously shimmy shimmy mute. <laughs> okay let's just talk in front of this guy who's standing here yeah. so he knows we're talking about they definitely it. haven't noticed that we're talking but no sound isn't coming out anymore yeah i mean right and then um 
there was one other thing, of course, and then Miguel and Anana when yes. they meet. Yes, Miguel. We got to just hit the main mm-hmm. points at this I point. I know. But I, I'm really happy. I thought that Daniel was going to put up more of a fight uh, when Anana basically calls into question everything that he knows about his life. Really? Yeah. You know, I, 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 I thought that he would. Well, I thought at this point he's questioning things. Right. Yeah, well, because I think he wouldn't question it as much if it wasn't for the fact that... Um, Hatake was very like just angry with him the last couple of episodes mm. because you know like how dare you question me and I feel like it was making Daniel question his relationship and like you're like my dad why aren't you confiding in me like who am mm. I to you so I feel like it wasn't that surprising like it was like maybe I thought he'd be a little bit more resistant but it's been in an, like his character is evolving every single episode for the last several episodes everyone is That's I mean a, yes yeah. but specifically in this instance you know we're seeing the softer side of him we're seeing this more less robotic side where he's actually starting to be a human who thinks for himself right so well, I, she, I like that scene. plus they play on the character the fa- any anyone who's adopted who yeah. doesn't know about their true family is always going to have those wonders oh yeah and mm-hmm. when somebody comes at you with something like this i mean you're not going to just blow it off immediately so like again you made the joke when they're like why are you taking me here no cameras like, <laughs> that's your sister inappropriately <laughs> but still it was funny but yeah and then uh, I don't know because that's what's driving the stake like we would have found out about Julian Hitaki unless except for that happening so that's just another bringing a problem in so they can avoid a solution wait what yeah. never if 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 Miguel wasn't there to intercept got them, it if he wasn't trying to corner him in that moment right um, okay true I uh, I want to talk about I want to talk about Sergio for just for just a little bit. Um, not only are we kind of developing a little more sympathy, a little more interest positively in him every episode, but um, his connection to Alaria and his connection to Constance calls into question what he was doing earlier because she she says that she sent him in. Right? Mm-hmm. She says mm-hmm. that she sent him in, so she's asking him to do all this damage to the base. She's trying to get him to bring Dr. Havit's head back to her. Mm. Even though now she's saying she only brought him in to uh, assess whether or not Hataki was double te- was, was not double team. <laughs> 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 oh. Two timing them. Uh, Two timing them. God. Entirely different. Not double team. Well, I mean, this just plays more. Steven and I are still on the side that Sergio is ultimately going to be a good guy. I now agree. Because he, he, he wouldn't have acted that way, killing yeah. Doreen. Yeah, and the other thing is, I want to know now what, I mean, if he obviously has this also, whether or not it goes deeper than just a sexual relationship with Constance. Right. I want to know if he knows about the freaky silver eye thing. I mean, I don't think he does. I don't think he does. I don't either. But at the same time, I just feel like I wonder what, you know, when that's going to come in. I wonder when they're going to find out what it is, if he'll find out about the silver eye thing before they know what it is. And if that has any effect on, I mean, how do you make out with someone who's got to fall down her teeth and you don't know? Because you wouldn't know. But I (laughs) I do like that they added the scene where he lifts up his shirt into the camera. Because what that does is it goes without a shadow of a doubt that he's not like Hitaki. Yes. It, it, yeah. it lets us know that he's not regenerating because it's kind of far-fetched to begin with that he would survive out in the frozen tundra shirtless with blood yes. coming out of him and then being saved. Yes. So, like, a lot of people had the skepticism of what is he a vector plus totally. or whatever we want to call it. Was it was also right. fan service, but, you know. What? I think I think the episode when he was on her couch, like, paint me like one of your yeah, French that girls. Was, that was the fan service. Exactly. That was the fan service okay. for you guys. But I think Sergio could actually be a... A uh, triple oh, agent of sorts, because yeah. right now we're just questioning who he, who is he loyal to, if not Constance, if not Hataki, if not CDC. Definitely not. Could Doreen. he be? Could he be uh, an army guy who's pretending to be a double agent and actually like secretly think, in there? I think ultimately what his journey over the first half of the season has shown us is that his ultimate allegiance is his is to his moral compass is to, is to morality he came in here to do a job that was a bit uh that was that was not great that you know was trying to help them make this virus make this weapon that could take over uh and and destroy all these many many people but in realizing how corrupt everyone around him is and realizing the countless casualties I think that ultimately he's going to realize that he's been working for the wrong side. He's not necessarily on the CDC side, but he's, he's not going to let Bond. anything. He's not going to let anything heinous happen. All right, but I'm, like he killed Doreen. Sorry, but like yeah, he, he, he did, killed Doreen. He did kill her. Which you. 
think we've thought it was for Ilaria. Yeah. But clearly it was not. Well, mm. Oh, they didn't want her him to kill her. Yeah. yeah. It's I think it, it had more to do with what she was uncovering, how fast she was uncovering it, and she he had to slow things down on the CDC's side uh, while he still figured out what was going on with Hitaki. I, yeah. I imagine we're going to get firmer a firmer explanation from him when he and Alan are alone in a room together, hopefully in the next couple mm -hmm. of episodes. Alan will get answers? What? Yeah. <laughs> oh, and by the way, Zach, um, she only said that in front of Alan. The whole thing about, you killed a CDC officer when she's looking for the... Yeah. He, she only said that in front of yeah, Alan. I, no, she was later upset with him because he took out 25%. She said 25% yes. no, no, no. of the cure, the team that I needed to cure this virus. So she I, didn't know. I feel like there's that, yeah. She slapped him. She slapped him, man. She you don't think face. she called the CDC, do you? Because we still had that question of who I thought originally she did. called them. Yeah, because she said that she needed the CDC to find help find the cure because they were taking too long on their own to find the cure. So she probably called in the CDC saying, hey, you know, what's up? This thing's going rampant. Can okay. you help them? Okay. Because she wanted faster. You know, obviously her and Hitake, for however long she's known him and has hired him to do this assignment, she's been waiting a really long time and her right. patience is there. So you're right. If, if, if Doreen had discovered what she discovered and they had made the cure before she got there, then it would have been delivered yeah. through the CDC to cure everyone as opposed to Hitaki finding out and about then they, it. But they kill the CDC members, no witnesses, as they have the cure before the CDC reports back, and yep. that's why. Okay. All that, right. Oh, that's why it destroys the satellite. Unfortunately, we do have to wrap up. I'm so sorry. No. Uh, we gotta go into predictions. Did, did they show you a sign, Matt? And now, you're no, no, no. As, as master and chairman of this podcast, I decreed. We got another like six to ten minutes. Okay. Well, uh, I've been told we need to wrap it up. So we're going to use those six to ten minutes to talk about predictions and, and wrap things up. We didn't tell um, you about that. There's flashing lights. <laughs> There's flashing lights. <laughs> the flashing lights <laughs> <Fireman, you remember. laughs> was surprising. It was, it was Your facial cool. expression was just great, though, because she's like... <laughs> <laughs> um, so what do, we, what do we think is... What do we think is happening next episode, rest of the season? You know, we got a lot of interesting reveals this week. How many more now episodes we've got we Vectors loose on level B. Um, well, it's episode seven. Is it 12 or 10 episode order? 13. 13. 13. 13. Great. So we have six more episodes. Cool. Um, I, we got these Vectors loose on level B. I think next week is definitely going to be a very tense situation. We've got Jules back in the fold. We've got Vectors on the loose. Guns a-blazing. Uh, we've got this uh, this Daniel Hataki showdown to deal with. I mean, what do you what are you guys feeling? What's your pick? I think that, and I keep saying this, so I don't know how right I am. But now that Julia found, you know, has this newfound silver eye thing. Yeah. I think now that like one of our main point of views of a character, like we're basically learning new things with her. She knows just as much about what's happening to her as the viewers watching this. So I feel that now we're going to start getting answers to what is it. What does it make the person do? What are your abilities? Because I feel yeah. like it's going to come into, it's not just going to be all about staring down a vector and them running away in fear. I think we're going to find out more about why is Constance filing down her teeth? What's up with the eyes? Who's hiding what? You know. Well, we saw in the preview a little bit of uh, Julia running through the ducks. And I, I, I thought I saw a quick shot of a... Ducks? Mm. Like quack? Like, That's no, my no, James ducks. Bond ducks. scene. Okay. Ducks, like the ducks. air ducks. And there's a vector coming <laughs> at her, which show. I guess they really like air ducks. Yeah. Because Peter was up there. Um, I think we're going to see... I'm just going to call them the silvers okay. from now okay. on. I said vector pluses. Vector. <laughs> I like silvers. I still like super. Um, but I think we're gonna start to see a little bit more of what is going on with them in terms of like I think it's gonna see uh, exactly what you're talking about, Liz. But more than that, what that have how uh, how that's become out of control. Yeah. Like if they're filing down their teeth, there's something that they are not able to control because Taki says she's in danger. Yes. As if there's something that she can't control about it. If it's just gonna happen. That's yeah. what I that's what I was thinking too cuz I feel like it's like the necessary thing to save them at the moment but in the end they don't have a cure for it and they don't have a cure for the disease itself. So finding a cure helps both their agendas. It helps them help themselves and it also helps cure the people after they kill off everyone. Um I also I don't know, a lot of my prediction I I got I got the scene with Julia coming face to face with the vector. I I thought yeah. that was going to happen. Yeah. That happened. I don't know. I really think there's going to be more to do with this 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 fusion. I think we're going to see that again. We're going to find out why Hataki has these scars, and I really want to know 
what the situation it was to turn Hataki into this thing, and if it was Havit that actually turned Hataki into the silver. And I want to know who was infected first. Well, infected first. If it was Hataki, was one of the original ones, or what about this Constance? It's like she has it done to her too. Like, was she? And they're not calling her doctor, so I don't think she was in on the project or anything like that. If she just, you know, more about her background. I hope we find okay. out more about her. One, background. one more Steve thing. One more thing. I also this was the prediction. I was just kind of rambling before I came back on my memory. Um, I think that Constance is trying to get to is going to try to get to Julian Allen through Sarah because there's there's yeah. an obvious stake that she can just kind of hammer in with Sarah and Allen through jealousy and through if Constance finds out about the person she and mercy killed in her room because that's still got to come back out. Not to mention Sarah's cancer and that she needs a cure for that, which yeah. is sitting conveniently and in development there. But I want to talk a little bit about she's what Stephen so you made sad. you made a short comment earlier about other bases. That I think like that's because now we're getting into a big we've been introduced to the bigger corporation. That was exactly the noise I made before when he said it. Um, <laughs> I we're think Zach introduced... was the only one who caught what I said. Yeah, but it was a bigger corporate. We're, we're seeing Alaria and who knows what else they're doing in other parts of the planet. Like this is the Arctic base. There's some people with purple eyes somewhere maybe. Oh. <laughs> okay. But like who knows what's in like the middle of Sahara or anywhere else that they could put right. a secret base of right. some kind. Okay. Well, the the world is obviously a lot bigger and now we have a lot of questions to ask uh, Mark on Friday. So I highly encourage if you have questions you want us to ask Mark, uh, tweet them at us. Uh, uh, we're going to give you our Twitter handles right now. I want to thank Kira Sigorski for joining thank us. You've been you. so Ooh, yeah. awesome. Really Really, fun. really a pleasure talking to you today. Um, where can the people find you online? Do you have a Twitter account? Yeah, yeah. That's uh, just my name, Kira Zagorski. Kira Zagorski. And do you have any Twitter. like projects coming up right now that you want to like shout out for people to check oh, out? Oh, yeah. There's there's things that um, I write a bit of stuff myself. So we kind of like there was a there was a short that we did that was a bit of a series that um, did really well last year with a couple of things. Um, so I've got some other projects that I'm putting together that we can. Be creating ourselves. Okay, I, 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 I I like to do that. I like to uh, awesome put out things that I think about myself too, rather than just waiting for it to come to me. It's a good way <laughs> to do what it. You gotta do. Yeah. yeah. Do so um so yeah that's that's what I'm working on right now. Okay. Is there anywhere we can go to check out that stuff? Um, when it's finished, yes, okay. that one. Um, the the one change that uh. One, uh, we won the Viz Effects Award at the Action on Film Festival. We had like six nominations. It was pretty cool. But Great. um uh that one is more of a piece of we didn't want to put it out too wildly because it really is better as a series. So okay. I'm trying to keep that one a little bit closer to home. But this new project I'm I'm working on writing is um is pretty exciting so okay i'll get in touch when i get well, it all if uh, yeah. people follow you at kira zagorski they'll be able to get the first details about mm. everything that you're working on yeah. thank you again you've been a wonderful Absolutely. guest and thank we're so you. excited to see you on the show um liz rishmaui where can the people find you hey everyone you can find me on twitter and instagram at lizzie maui that's at l-i-z-z-y-m-a-w-y Okay, Zach Wilson. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at that Zach Wilson, and here at AfterBuzz on the Grim, uh, Archer, and Almost Human After Shows. Check out that shirt. Yeah. 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 Hashtag Ziz. Yeah. Hashtag Tweet Ziz. us with the hashtag Ziz. Yeah. Seriously, uh, do it. Um, All right, Stephen. You guys can find me on uh, Twitter at uh, Stephen Lemieux, S T P H E N L E M I E U X, and doing the after show for ABC Family's Twisted here Tuesday night. No, Wednesday nights at six. And make sure you tune in Friday, new time Friday for this week for Mark and Ime, and we're going to do some music stuff too. Yeah, it's going to be a blast. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Matt Lieberman. That's M-A-T-T-L-I-E-B-E-R-M-A-N. And if you're feeling nasty, you can follow me on the Instagram at Matty Lieberman. It's Matt and then letter Y. <laughs> I'm Lieberman. scared. Started doing that on the shows. I like it. I'm adding it to the to the end to the end roll off. Also, all over the place on AfterBuzz TV. Almost Human, Agents of Shield, Lost Girl, uh, Helix, of course, Banshee, Justified. And Cougar Town, more shows being announced all the time. And if you like live comedy, you're in the LA area, you can come see me perform at the IO West Comedy Theater on Hollywood Boulevard, 6366 Hollywood Boulevard, March 9th, Sunday, March 9th at 9 p.m. as a member of DJ Fawcett. I want to thank Kira again for joining us. We're so excited. Woo! Friday night, Woo! Mark Anime, going to be in the studio. Thank you all, and uh, we'll zizz you later. All right. <laughs> Executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. 
to watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. See you later. later. <laughs> the views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principal. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here, and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later.